actually always mention Andaman and Nicobar, but uh, they are quite different from one another in, a, in many ways. Uh, at the outset, let me tell you that Andaman is actually part of Eastern Himalayas. This is one of my aerial photographs of Janibar Island, one of my very uh, favorite photographs. Now you can see the uh, corals on either side. And this is a pre-tsunami photograph. If you go today there, you won't see it like this. Because uh, corals were badly damaged during um, uh, tsunami. And even actually we lost this beach. During tsunami we lost this. I mean the island tilted in a manner that there was no beach thereafter. Now we used to go like this in big boats. Though the water, water depth is about 20 to 30 feet, but you can clearly see what is down below. Water is that clear. So here, this is the exact coastline. And from the boats, we used to go in the glass bottom boats. And these are the corals. So they used to take us over the corals. We could see a lot of corals uh, from the boat itself, sitting in the boat. And then we could go for uh, snorkeling, scuba diving, for actual uh, watching the coral fishes. My son and my daughter, uh, you, you need not know actually swimming. You can use a, a tube and you go, all you have to do is put on that goggles and you can see. You can see what is there, you know. Now these are the corals. I had a wonderful collection of pre-tsunami photographs including aerial photographs of most of the islands and after tsunami there were dramatic changes. Some of the islands actually fragmented, some of the islands uh, tilted, some of the islands actually submerged. I tried for many years to periodically record exactly what is happening to each island. I mean this is because of the readjustment at the fault line. In the process I had to study about anthropology, about early human migration. Fortunately, genetics is not very difficult for me to understand but I had to seriously study all other subjects. Oceanography, I had to go to Goa. Dona Paula, they have this Indian Institute of Oceanography. I was sitting on their head. Please explain to me. When I went to an island after tsunami, I just asked the helicopter pilot to please take me to this particular island. I showed him a pre-tsunami photograph of an island. He said, sir, I have never seen this island. I said, okay, then, okay, fine, you take me between Little Nicobar and uh, uh, Kamar Thailand. So when we were flying, we, we found a rock there, much different from the previous um, uh, pre-tsunami state. I recorded the latitude, longitude of that, exactly this is where we found that and I went to Dehradun to identify. Then I, I wanted to read about these islands and I realized there's hardly any book about uh, these two islands. I mean these two archipelagos. Then I, I, I started writing initially, I, I wrote in Bengali and the Ananda publisher published that, uh, one on Andaman, one on Nicobar. Then UBS, Niyogi and these two last, uh, I mean and now, but I'm continuously trying to improve my knowledge about Andaman and Nicobar because I personally think that there's a lot these two islands can provide. It can actually answer many uh, anthropological puzzles and uh, geological puzzle of, the, of, of India. Unless you understand or go deeper into this understand, you will never understand what had happened to this country. I mean the history of this country. That is why I'm here in this history. There are 572 islands in all, out of which only 22 are in Nicobars and the rest are in Andamans. But not that all the islands are big islands. Some are actually rock and isles. So basically 200 are reasonably big island. They are separated by 10 degree channel as I mentioned that though we always mention Andaman and Nicobar together but they are different in many ways. But actually it, it comes in seismic zone 5. Yeah, earthquakes are very common here. Fault line goes pa passes through that in which all the uh, volcanic volcanoes are there, you know, Barren Island, Rakondam Island and including the Indonesian volcanoes are in that fault line. Total length is about 800 kilometer. Cape Negres, you know, Cape Negres is somewhere here in the, uh, Myanmar. Uh, that is 120 miles from the uh, uh, northern end of North Andaman. And similarly, uh, Achin Head of uh, Sumatra Island of Indonesia is only 90 miles from the Indira Point. Indira Point is the southern tip of the Great Nicobar Island. There are only 27 inhabited islands in Andaman of which 5 has got single digit population. There are 13 islands of Nicobar which are actually inhabited out of which now I have written now 12 because I will show you an island where actually I have played volleyball and where we have lived has sunk. 
So that has island has been evacuated and it has become almost submerged now. Uh, these islands are mar mount mountain mountainous islands, whereas uh, these are tabletop islands, absolutely flat island. There is no uh, elevation whatsoever. Whereas these are mountainous because uh, this is actually the extension of eastern Himalayas. Nicobar islands were in, uh, flat and the, all the villages were right on the coast. So they were very badly affected. Let us go to Chidiya Tapu. Tsunami caused enough damage, ecological damage to that place. Lot of large trees actually uh, succumbed. So this is one of the tree which succumbed there. Now let us see what happened during tsunami. As I mentioned, ki actually this is in uh, seismic zone 5. It's earthquake prone zone. India was not a part of Asia. Uh, when we go back to the geological events, we will find there was a single landmark known as Pangaea, which split into two, northern half and southern half. That is, northern half is Laurasia and the southern half is Gondwana. From eastern Gondwana, one fragment actually was India, which crossed Tethys Sea and collided with Asia, thereby uh, forming the Himalayas. Now, this is what is happening. Okay, this is Laurasia, this is Gondwana. So one fragment from Gondwana, actually, this is India, that went across Tethys Sea and collided with this, and that resulted in the formation of the Himalayas. And this is the Indian extension, that is Andamans. Now, these fault line still remains. Majority of the earthquakes take place along this fault line, and this fault line actually here is, is passing between uh, through the Andaman Sea, as I mentioned, where the volcanoes are there, that is uh, east of Andaman and between Andaman and Malay coast. On 26 December 19, 2004, this unfortunate uh, major earthquake of 9.3 in Richter scale actually occurred and hit the Andaman and Nicobar Islands, which created uh, uh, giant waves and that is known as giant tsunami waves, which actually devastated particularly the Nicobar group of islands. This photograph I have shown you before, I am actually keeping this as the uh, standard. We are aligning this uh, uh, same island like this. Now you see the beach here and now this is what happens immediately after tsunami. That is, the uh, island gets rotated on the southern side. Basically not the island, it is the sea plate actually tilts towards the south. What happened that uh, technically it is called subduction of the India plate under Burma microplate. So there, there was a definite tilt. You can see the beach has completely disappeared within a few days. You can see a rim of beach on the southern side which disappears indicating that the island has tilted this side. I was trying to keep a periodic record after for some time it was possible therefore after thereafter at the personal level it was not possible. <laughs> So after two and a half years, what I find is the island has realigned itself and the tilt is less. We can see the thin rim of beach which, is, uh, which was there and this tongue has reduced in size indicating that the tilt has reduced but the island has submerged to some extent. It is known as Grav Island which had a beach all around like, uh, uh, like a rim. You can see what has happened immediately after the after tsunami. One half of the island tilted. This is a clear cut uh, photographic evidence that it, it tilted. The one side of the sea plane or sea plate actually tilted. And this is what is happening after two years. That is after two and a half, uh, three years. That is the, uh, the beach is becoming, here the beach is quite wide involving half of the island. Whereas here it is actually becoming a tongue shaped beach. That is again the tilt of the island has reduced but the whole thing has sunk to some extent. Now as I, as I had mentioned that this is a, a sand bridge uh, connecting two, uh, uh, two islands. But uh, uh, what happened it got snapped and then uh, it started reforming after six eight months and after one and a half years he actually got joined together now as i mentioned dennis east india company occupied nicobars and named new denmark austria attempted to establish a colony in the nicobars on the mistaken assumption that denmark had abandoned its claim over the region named it teresa danes sold nicobars to the british 1860 68 to 1888 british maintained a penal settlement in the nicobar in kamartha island in 1947, Nicobars form a part of Andaman and Nicobar Islands and then uh, thereafter we actually forgot about Nicobar till tsunami occurred when we realized that something has happened where in Andaman and Nicobar and where is Nicobar then the, the people started searching where is Nicobar. Actually if you 
till few years back, two three years back, till my books were published, there was hardly two three pages about entire Nicobar because nobody knew anything about Nicobar. Nicobar is uh, some place where neither the tourist goes, so Nicobar remains almost a very little explored uh, re region. British census record uh, did mention. In fact, they mentioned that tsunami had occurred there 1883. So I could get it from the census reports that more or less what they were describing was uh, something similar to tsunami but though that information did not ever reach mainland but at least in the local census report it was mentioned now this is a very very dreamy it's one of my most favorite place for obvious reason let me just quickly show you some photographs this is what is nicobar this is the white color of the Fraud and the say, sand, and then see the color difference in the sea as as it, it as it is becoming more and more deeper. The color, the hue of the, of the uh, blue is changing. Now there are some uh, streams which are go, going inside. I love rainy season, so I uh, Nicobar rains are quite famous. Now you can see that this is the cloud. You can't imagine the rain thereafter what we faced. But it was uh, when it is sunny, it is so beautiful. This is what has happened there. This is the abandoned house of the Queen of Nankori. So, because that family was quite wealthy, they could construct a nice house and yeah, but uh, I could manage to take this photograph because I was told that at 7.10 will be the low tide, so I managed to reach at that time because uh, during high tide time, actually the water is going up up to this. I have a photograph of that also, uh, from taken from a distant island. And this is what is happening that during tsunami, majority of the Nicobar Islands actually submerged. Submerged in the sense that it went down by three, 2 meters to 4-5 meters, Great Nicobar about 5 meters. So this is what has actually happened. You know, see, see the uh, yes, it is that this is pre-tsunami. This is pre-tsunami southern end of the Karnicobar Island. And this about 1.25 kilometer of the tip of the island is eroded, lost. Now why, why it is happening? That this is a pre-tsunami photograph, this is a post-tsunami photograph. These are the coral reefs. Now this sort of reefs extended right up to 100 meters or 200 meters into the sea. Now all the waves used to lose its strength, only gentle waves used to come to the shore. Now, during tsunami, what happened? All the corals were uprooted and thrown on the land, and the sea beach, I mean, sea floor became very smooth. You can see how dangerous this is that uh, the sea is actually hitting the coast, and this is not rock. This is not solid rock coast. This is actually a very soft coast, we call it. And so the erosion has caused this. You can see the denudation of the land here, that all the coconut trees are lost. And you can see how much of uh, the, you can see the difference. The sea is so gentle here and it is so rough here. And this is the Chaura Island. It was one of the island where I was actually not permitted to stay at night because they said, you know, they don't, they actually don't, uh, they kill the uh, outsiders. I mean, till few years back, I'm talking about 1999. So I said, let me have the first uh, impression about that place. I'm very keen. So this is pre-tsunami photograph. We were dropped here. This was the central grassland and the, all the villages were right on the coast and this was the jetty there so unfortunately as i mentioned that most of the villages were right on the coast so they were affected very badly during tsunami so that same thing happened and this island was evacuated completely but these people wanted to go back to that island only so what happened ki the uh, government decided to reconstruct the rehabilitation uh, villages in the central island so thereafter it was like that and they lived a very primitive life actually and this is what they have constructed. The villages are they, they, the village look like this now. And this is what has happened that the island, I mean the yeah, the village has now moved there. This particular beach is one of the most beautiful beach. I will I will try to show you a photograph of this beach. So this is that Nankori Island. This is actually Trinket Island. It's a group of Nankori Island, Central Nicobar. This is completely submerged. I'll show you a photograph of this. This is another very interesting island I had mentioned that this is Trinket Island. Trinket Island huts were different construction-wise. They were different. Now they are playing volleyball. Now you can see 
what has happened to that island. It's very unlikely to survive because there's not a single large tree there left. This is after four years of tsunami, it is still underwater, you can see. And the uh, fisherman's village has been, uh, I mean, they had to construct that on top of a hill. Can you imagine the frustration amongst the fishermen? They always do something on the, with their boat, with their net, but uh, they, the government said Ki nothing doing, we are not, I mean, next tsunami will get, uh, it, it may cause further damage, so they have constructed this on the, on the hilltop. <laughs>